Hey guys, it's Kelsey and back with another scrapbooking process video and today we're playing along with the Scraptacular Cropping Club and we have a sketch challenge. So this sketch is from Francis Sylvia. I really liked the tags running down the side, the simple layering, but you still have those fun details like the scallop uh, horizontal bit. So I was all for this one. I'm really getting low in my supplies here. So I'm going to try and use mostly scraps other than the 12 by 12. I've been hoarding this background all month. I don't know why I haven't wanted to pull it in yet. I just love this peachy background with the white chevron <laughs> slashes. I think it's so cute. And so I'm finally going to get it used up on this page. I will gut a massive portion in the middle. You can already see that there's a huge chunk that's going to be covered by these layers. So I will salvage that bit. Um, <laughs> but I'm just trying to figure out which papers and scraps I'm going to use for each of these elements before I start trimming everything. I have two four by sixes, which I trimmed down a little bit of Avery and I think it's Boo. It's one of um, uh, Grandpa Mike's um, Burmese mountain dogs. It's either Boo or Sue. It's kind of hard to tell from this side angle, um, <clears throat> but it's just so cute. They're always so interested in Avery, but they're always so gentle. You guys have already seen a page of Avery sandwich between the two of them. And I just wanted to document another page because they're just so cute. <laughs> so I just trimmed them enough. Honestly, I really just trimmed them because I had a scrap of white paper and I didn't want to pull out a whole nother sheet. So I trimmed the photo to be small enough to mat on the paper I had, which ended up working out because it's just dead space in the photo anyways. But I'm going to layer them the same way they were in the sketch. And instead of three tags, I'm actually going to use four tags. These tags are a little bit more narrow than the ones in the sketch. But I, this is another reason I had to do this sketch. There's so many tags that come in this collection on the cut apart sheets. Uh, and there's, I just didn't want this many left over at the end of the month. So I really was able to get four of them on this page. And I'm just pulling in um, complementary colors, but I kind of knew I wanted this to be a multicolored layout, but not super in your face rainbow like some of the other ones. So now I'm just trying to space everything. I really don't need to salvage these tags. If I was in the beginning of the month, I would cut the bottom parts of these tags that would be covered in case I could use them on another layout. But we're getting towards the end of the month. I know I'm not going to use those sentiments, so I'm going to go ahead and cover them. <laughs> and I really felt like, well, part of it is this wood strip wasn't wide enough to cover all of the tags. Um, so I just added a torn piece of white for an extra layer <laughs> and some more interest. So it gives me a little bit more width there. So it would just cover what I don't need because I was being stubborn. I just really didn't want to trim the bottom of those tags because I feel compelled to use it. <laughs> So again, just tearing for some texture. I like that pop of white. It really keeps it fresh. I feel like this page is just looking really clean and I'm trying to stick with that aesthetic on this one. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue down what I have. This is the advantage to working on a sketch and knowing where your layers go. You don't have to wait very long before you can start gluing down these big elements. Before I glue down this navy piece though, I do want to gut the background. So I'm just checking my spacing really quick here. I'm gonna gut a big portion of this navy as well because those photos are gonna cover up a huge chunk um, of the navy. <laughs> I have almost all of the sketch elements, so I think I am going to go ahead and try to figure out the horizontal piece too. There's a couple scraps off to the side I'm looking through now to figure out what I want to be that element. I really want to use the light blue star paper. I have a, a good size scrap, but it just doesn't seem long enough. I'll bring it in frame in a minute, but it's not long enough to overlap the other elements the way it does in the sketch. And I really liked that part of that piece. So I will just kind of finagle this scrap here. Um, usually when I run into this element, I'll just trim it and pull it as wide as it needs to go. And wherever the gap is, I'll just make sure I have some kind of layer or embellishment covering it. So once again, that's going to be my go-to um, in figuring out how to make this work. <laughs> uh, so I, I, before I mess with that, I'm going to go ahead and get my twine situated for the tags. Um, again, I'm using my raw twine. I just think it looks really nice whenever I have a wood grain. It brings in that warmth. Um, and it adds that texture that the wood grain print doesn't always include. So this kind of is my way around it. I don't know I've ever used twine like this, but I just felt like because the tags were so close to the edge, I couldn't thread my twines like 
like normal my tags like normal because the twine would just get bunched up on the side of the page protector so instead i decided to, just to tie tiny little twine bows and glue them over the whole reinforcer as my twine element so that was different and um, it actually didn't take that long i'm just using my tombow mono multi glue to glue them down over the knot so that they won't come unglued at any point. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of my way around that. And I think that's a really sweet element too. I really like that detail. So I'm just adding my glue on all of these and I'll stick those down. Um, but I thought that was also really sweet and worked around the twine like problem I was having. <laughs> so now those are all glued down. I think I'm going to gut the background so I can start gluing things. I don't know if I do that before or after I figure out how to stretch the star paper, but it looks like I'm going to go ahead and gut the background. That way I can get things glued. Um, I am thinking, this is one thing that was in the sketch, was that navy polka dot paper I'm using, um, it did not have that running past the scallop horizontal piece, but I kind of want to see that navy on the bottom side of that scallop detail. Um, I think it'll emphasize the scallop, but I think it'll make it look more layery having that paper down there as well. So that's another thing I'll end up cutting and stretching because the gap will be covered by the star piece. So there's going to be a lot of kind of finagling with scraps to make them the size that I need. <laughs> um, but that is not new for me. I feel like I have to do that a lot because I'm so frugal. So um, this is another one of those times where I have to make it work. <laughs> but you can see I have two pieces here. Um, I really didn't have to cover up too much of a gap, but I did have to use two pieces to create that length. Um, but the seam that you see there and the gap in the paper will be covered, so it doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and glue um, this section down. I really like where the navy is sitting, and then I'll have to figure out that star paper. <laughs> um, but I love this, and I love this color combo with the navy and the peach. I think there's such beautiful contrast. And it wasn't until now, I'm looking at this page, and I don't know if it's the peach peachy background with this navy polka dot but I was looking at it and like I feel like I've seen this collection before like for whatever reason this particular page with boho baby I'm like why does it look so familiar and you know what it is it is the very first simple stories paper I have ever used or collection was I think it's called posh p-o-s-h and I think it was one of the very first actual collections I got to play with um, and I chose Simple Stories because, again, they give you these nice little packets where they give you multiple embellishments with it. And this looks like Posh, and Posh is not a baby collection. I honestly don't even know if you can still find it. But if you like Boho Baby, but you don't have a baby, so you don't want baby theme, see if you can find any Simple Stories Posh because it is very similar. It doesn't have that Boho vibe. It doesn't have that wood grain and a lot of the cute elements I really like in Boho Baby. But this particular page looks a lot like Posh. So if this is vibing with you, um, yeah, maybe maybe try Posh because I used it. I know I used it when I did my DC pages. I really remember documenting the Smithsonian with um, the Simple Stories Posh, if you can find. <laughs> I don't even know if I was doing process videos at, those at that time. I feel like I was. Maybe I wasn't. I don't know. It'll be in the flip throughs either way in my, um, my album flip throughs. But anyways, I just thought I would mention that because it was driving me crazy why this page, like why these products look so familiar all of a sudden. <laughs> and it was because of that, which makes sense because, again, it's both simple stories. So they're going to have similar, you know, colors and, and stuff throughout collections. But anyways, I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> and here you can see where I trimmed. I went ahead and did a border punch to create that scallop detail. And then I'm just creating a cut and stretching this star paper so I get the length of that star paper that I need. And then I already did my journaling on a die cut piece that says um, February 2020, Boo and Sue are very interested in you. Even though they are big dogs, they are always gentle, which I thought was sweet. So I'm just going to pop that piece up on some foam and layered it over the gap. And nobody will know, <laughs> except for you guys, that I had to finagle that. So I'm just thinking this will be the base of a cluster. Um, I kind of like the idea of having this cluster in the lower left hand corner and then maybe a secondary cluster in the upper right hand corner so that's kind of where i'm thinking embellishment wise i kind of got stuck on my title i really wanted to use white but again i've been having issues with my white thickers finding letters because i've been using them so much that a lot of them are dead uh, so i went through my trusty Felicity jane stash and of course i found these beautiful puffy catherine 
um, alpha stickers that are like the perfect color. So all I'm going to do is title this play. I really didn't feel like I needed to say anything else. Um, and I had the colors I kind of wanted to use to create the same look. And I think this ties into the different colored tags down the side. I really like that repetition. And I just wanted one more pop of yellow because there's that one random yellow tag. Um, <clears throat> So I wanted to have a little bit of yellow around the page. So I did have that one Y that's yellow. You get the yellow star in this little journaling piece. There's a couple other areas where I'll have yellow. One of the other tags has a yellow hole reinforcer. I thought about using this star to include more yellow, um, but it was more of that mustard instead of that light lemon yellow. So I decided not to use that. I didn't want to, this, this page is so fresh and the mustard makes it like warmer and more autumnal to me. I just love mustard for fall. Um, so I'm trying to keep it more of the, the lemon yellow versus the mustard yellow. So it just takes me a minute to figure out what I wanna do. I definitely want to create some banners or something next to the journaling piece just to add some more interest. But the journaling or the little banners I had in the ephemera and the cut aparts were not really in the colors I wanted to use. Um, so I ended up just taking a scrap of the star paper, the navy star paper, which again had some more yellow stars on it. So that was a plus. And I just ended up making that into a banner. I thought about using the, this side of it, which was the minty green, but there's not really much minty green. And I flipped it over and it was the star paper. And I liked how that looked better because it has the navy. <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet though. So <laughs> We'll just see how long it takes for me to flip this over and decide. I really do like the mint color, uh, but as I keep adding other things, it just makes more sense to use the navy. I did pull in that little one sticker in the top. I've been waiting to use that. It's one of my favorite elements on the sticker sheet. And I just love how it looks like this little shelf with some cute elements on it. That rainbow again has mustard, but I think all the other colors tie into the colors I've been using so far. Um, and so now I'm back down to this other cluster and I go ahead and switch it over to the navy. I really have been wanting to use this little mushroom on the sticker sheet as well. And there's that little mushroom on that sticker I just placed in the upper right hand corner. So that was my excuse to get the other mushroom used up on this page so that there's a mushroom in both clusters. I just think that's so cute. It's kind of random, but I love it. Um, so I will pop that mushroom up on some foam to be a little element down there on that navy banner but i'm liking how this is coming together um, i don't want to add too much more a lot of the elements i have to the left there that you can see are just not in the color scheme i'm working on or they just add extra patterns that wouldn't really be anywhere else so i'm trying to avoid having to pull in any more of that stuff um, so i'm trying to figure out how i can finish this page um, you know, without doing that. So I'm going through enamel dots and stuff. I've already used the rest of my frosted dots. There are some really cool mirrored dots on that sheet that Allie gave me. I'm hoarding them a little bit because I think those add a really cool, like modern flair to certain pages. Um, but because I'm trying to keep this one more rustic and clean, I decided to go with a normal colored enamel dots. And I really felt like even though I didn't use the minty side of that banner, these minty colored enamel dots looked really pretty on this page. So that's what I'm going to end up using as my finishing touch. I'm just going to do a cluster of three in each area, which I think is the rest of the <laughs> minty dots on that page. I think I only had the six, um, but I'm just creating a little cluster in each area just so it gives you that extra pop of color and texture. Um, I still want to add some more stickers. I'm really trying to use <laughs> as much of the stickers as possible as I'm getting close to the end of the month. So you did see me add that rattle sticker to the other side of the title. Um, I'm feeling like there's a disconnect between the photos and the rest of the elements to the sticker in the upper right hand corner. I love that cluster up there, but I really want to connect it to the rest of the page. Um, and again, since there's so many word stickers on the sticker sheet, I thought I would just layer a couple word stickers in that gap just so there's some connection. So I'm just going to grab three. One is that light blue. One is that kind of middle blue. And then the same peachy color as the background. It just says cutie pie, snuggle bug, and little slice of heaven, which I think is all really cute. <laughs> um, so yeah. I did pretty good on that sticker sheet. I'm still not done yet. There's still another page or two to come. We'll see how much of that sticker sheet is left by the end, but I think I'm just giving one more glance to see if there's anything else I want to add, but I think I'm done. So um, 
Am I trying to add something else? I don't think I add anything else. Oh, I was really trying to use, put those little chipboard socks somewhere. Um, but yeah, they just weren't going to work. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to call it good. I think this is super cute. I think it, it follows the sketch. I had a lot of fun playing along with the Scraptacular Cropping Club. I was late to this challenge. This was like the sketch from April, but I still had to go back and do it. So here are the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.